afternoon everyone. Uh, press conference number two for the day and uh, new room. So firstly, after I said yesterday that there would be no more additions to the 2016 Australian Olympic team, our team is about to increase by one. Again, in fact, it has just increased by one. Tennis player Sam Groff uh, has been offered a spot in the men's singles, taking our tennis section now to 10 players. We've just, literally 20 minutes ago, finalised his entry and team leader Alicia Mollick is in the process of contacting Sam who's in the States and obviously very keen to get here as soon as he can. So we'll facilitate that flight as soon as we can. So our team is now up to 421. An update from our women's water polo team. They will be moving into the village this afternoon with the exception of goalkeeper Leah Yanitsis who will remain in isolation in BV1 with the team doctor uh, for the time being. Hopefully she can come back uh, in tomorrow. The remainder of the team are training tonight at Maria Lenke Pool. We have a full, fa full, full panel this afternoon, so I'll get straight to introducing our swimmers who arrived yesterday. Dual world champion M. Seabolt will take to the pool in her third Olympic Games in the 100 and 200 backstroke. 100 metre freestyle world champion Bronte Campbell will compete at her second Olympics in the 50 and 100 freestyle. Kate Campbell, fresh off claiming the 100 long course freestyle world record just a few weeks ago in Brisbane, will also compete alongside her sister and the 50 and 100 freestyle. And the boys, Mitch Larkin, also reigning dual backstroke world champion, will compete in the men's 100 and 200 backstroke at his second games. And finally, Cam McAvoy will also be busy in the 50 and 100 freestyle events and no doubt a couple of relays also. Also like to welcome the head coach of the swimming section, Jaco Vaharan, and hand over now for questions. Thank you. Is there a microphone? Has made a decision to let a couple of the Russian male sprinters back in. Um, it all seems to be a bit of a mess that's going to continue right up until the games begin. What are you thinking about this situation at this point? Uh, somebody from CAS actually addressed, we had a, a regular shift emissions meeting this morning, was with the IOC. Uh, the IOC came in for an hour at the start. A uh, representative from CAS was there. Uh, I also spoke with Kit McConnell, the Director of Sport from the IOC, and they realised that this just has to be sorted as soon as possible. Kit was hoping to get it done by today. Um, you know, we're three, four days out from the start of the Games. They were, um, Kaz said that they would start, obviously, as they have done, to release some decisions today and tomorrow, but they're very keen to get this all resolved as soon as possible because it's just, it's too late now to, to bring anyone else in. It's going to be very difficult. Hi, um, and God for this room today to the two sisters. Uh, it took uh, Serena and Venus about six years to start playing well against each other because it, it was difficult for them psychologically. How do you do things? Was it ever a problem beating one each other? Um, I think it's very different to Serena and, and Venus because we're not playing against each other on a tennis court. We're, we're swimming in a swimming pool with six other people in the race and I'm not really racing against Kate, I'm racing against myself and trying to do my best race regardless of what Kate's doing. So it is very different and we've always really enjoyed racing together against the rest of the world, not necessarily against each other. Obviously the decision with Russia affects you with one of your main rivals, Morozov, being uh, sort of at the centre of it all. But what's it like, you know, only a few days out from competition, not knowing whether he's going to be racing or not? The, the impact all this stuff has on my preparation um, is, is virtually nil. Um, I, regardless of what happens, I'm still going to rock up to the pool and do whatever session my coach gives me. I'm going to be behind that block for whatever races I'm in. I'm going to do the same, the same race plan, the same race strategy. Uh, and absolutely nothing changes regardless of, of any decision outside of, of my own little bubble and, and, and outside of what I need to do for myself. 
of this team, and I guess there are in every Olympics, but you take us inside the camp, what the, the feeling is like, do you feel those expectations, or is it more personal expectations? I don't think anyone has a higher expectation of themselves than themselves. Uh, I know that for myself, no one is going to be more upset if I don't perform than myself, and no one is going to be more happy if I perform than, than myself. So I, I, I can't speak for anyone else on the team, but um, it's, it's a very individual and a very selfish sport, and um, I've kind of just had to shrug off all, all the other expectations because in the end, it's, it, it's down to me, um, it, and the rest of it doesn't matter. You've coached, you know, some great champions, and you've got some world champions all around you. Do you sense some, something special with this group? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a special group. Um, all you see here is uh, world champions. Uh, but yeah, we, we really have to see. Let's say this is the Olympics. Everybody starts at zero again, uh, and that is the approach we really take. Doesn't matter how good you are. Um, uh, it, you need to get it together on the day here. So, uh, and that's really what we're focusing on. So, not into what might happen or might not happen. Four day, you know, three or four days from competition, are you are you at the place where you want to be? Yeah, we're in Rio for starters. That's great. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. That was an easy one to get me. Um, so, uh, and uh, no, we're, we're very happy. We had a great staging camp in, uh, in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, was uh, Queensland weather there. And for the ones that doesn't mean what that means, it's hot and humid. And apparently all these guys next to me, they love it. Uh, so, uh, we had a great staging camp, no issues, injuries, uh, at least no major issues, uh, all very manageable, and all arrived in great shape, so very happy with that. Hey, Kate and Bronte, um, can you uh, just, so what would it mean, uh, sisters or siblings to, um, sorry, um, to, to share a podium at an individual event or just to stand uh, next to each other? Um, look, it's, it, it's an incredibly special thing just to be competing in an Olympic Games together. Um, I think in 2012, after we qualified for the team together in, in the 50 freestyle, uh, we both knew that we'd achieved something great just by qualifying for the team. And I think that even this time around, it was as special. Um, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm almost more excited to, to race with Bronte in, in, in the 4x100 freestyle, really. I think that that, that would be a really great night. Um, and in terms of thinking of podiums, that's, that's, that's not the way uh, I think. Of course, it would be great. But for, for me, it's about executing a good race and um, hoping that Bronte does, does the same thing. And uh, I, I can't control what anyone else does, does in the field, especially what Bronte does. So I, I have to focus on, on what I can do. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, get a good result. Kate, Kate, I also have a question for you. I'm Martin from the Netherlands. Um, talking about your opponents, Bronte is of course one of your opponents, but also Sarah Sjöström. But what about Ranomi? I mean, her personal best is 52.75, but she swam that already four years ago, more than four years ago. Is she still in your mind for this 50 and this 100 freestyle? She's a dual Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> um, of course. She, she is uh, one of the, the, the main competitions, you know, it's, it's going to be a really stacked field. It, it, there are so many great swimmers out there um, and yeah, she, she, of course, she's a great racer. She's shown that time and time again uh, in, in the competitions since 2012. So I think that you can never discount anyone and that's what's great uh, about an Olympic Games. It's why everyone loves it, is that anything can happen and anyone can step up and perform. So. Uh, yeah, she's, she, she's definitely going to be up there, but um, in saying that, I, I won't be focusing on her, just like I won't be focusing on Sarah or I won't be focusing on Bronte. It's uh, all about me and what, what I can do and how I can execute my best race. I have a question. Sorry, Sorry I have a question for Cam. So you um, just quit 200 meters freestyle just before you came to Rio. So can you tell us the reason why do you feel it's difficult to like compete to games 
in this time? Um, so I qualified for the, the 50, 100, and 200 freestyle at the trials, and not in my mind, but in my coach's mind, even uh, during those trials and, and a bit beforehand, he was thinking about the possibility of, of maybe not swimming the 200 because the program um, which was ultimately released around that time, uh, actually I'm not sure when it was released, but uh, the, the program, it, it has a lot of double ups from, for myself and although I've been racing that program for quite a number of years now, um, this particular one uh, had the relays doubling up with peak and semi-finals of the 100 and the 200 freestyle and it was a matter of uh, multiple angles of, of, of thinking about it and it was it was more finally getting the advice from, from a few people, um, which was that the moment you realise the Olympics is, is different to every other event there is, uh, that's the moment when you can start preparing for it. And then with that, that was kind of like the, the catalyst to, to think about um, whether or not it was worth competing in the 200 freestyle and having those three, well, if all went well, the heat, semi and final, um, on top of my, my general program with it all bunched up together. And we looked at it from the perspective uh, individually and then also from the perspective uh, as a team as well with, with the relays and um, we ultimately came to the decision that it would be best on both fronts to, to not do the 200 this year. Hello, uh, to Coach Van Heeren. Um, you were brought in to bring expertise to Australia, but what have you, can you speak a bit about the differences between European swimming and Australia, maybe things you learned? Or? Uh, yeah, whenever you go to another place, uh, you definitely learn a lot, so um, uh, I hope to bring something uh, to Australia, but I definitely got a lot out of it myself, uh, it's a great experience. I'm working with great coaches uh, that don't have... Um, that all don't have a similar approach. So, so really what you see, I don't really believe there's a European approach or an Australian approach or an American approach. Uh, all the coaches I know, and that's by now quite a lot, and, and having seen their program, they all work very differently uh, and in their own way are all very successfully. So uh, yes, there are some differences, uh, and especially what I appreciate in Australia is the wonderful culture they have amongst coaches, amongst athletes, a uh, great history in swimming, and they really cherish that. And I think that's a great thing uh, that I haven't seen uh, in, in Europe nor in, uh, in America at this point. Uh, Cam, um, can you just give us an insight into how you relay, you feel your relay is coming together, um, what, maybe what went on obviously in, in America, and, and do, you feel, do you feel you're a, a real gold medal chance in that? Uh, is that the 4x1 or 4x2? Yeah, the 4x1. The, the mood, because uh, I can only talk on, uh, on behalf of myself and, and what I've observed with the Australian team, and the mood with, with the, the relay team with us uh, is really, really good. and It, it aligns with how I approach uh, a lot of my, or how I like to approach a lot of my competition, and it's a, it's a very relaxed vibe, um, a very, it's a feeling of we know what we need to do individually and, and we're comfortable with that and uh, that's, that, that has a lot of synergy with um, how we like to go about and race. Uh, we, have, we, we are aware of what the rest of the world are doing um, and I'm not sure but this, this year seems like uh, there is the, the most depth in the world um, in, in the history of the sport in the 4x100 freestyle relay. So, uh, I think in saying that it's going to be an exciting race um, for the spectators and, and even more for the people in it and, and it's one of the events that I'm most excited to, to race in at these games. Yako, you mentioned um, about history in Australian swimming, we had the sad news uh, that Forbes Carlisle passed away. Have you had a, a chance to speak to the team about his input on Australian swimming? Uh, we had a chance to talk to, especially the coaches, uh, I think, um, well, everybody probably also on this table knows who Forbes Carlisle was, uh, but definitely the coaches are um, uh, really attached to him. Uh, 
whenever a coach in Australia makes a national team, you receive a ring with a number. I'm number 113, but Forbes Carlisle is the number one. He's the genuine alpha, the Lord of the Rings, you'd say. And, um, and he was so innovative and, and let's say, redefined uh, the job of coaching, reinvented it. And uh, we owe him a lot. Australia, definitely, but also the Netherlands. He's been the head coach in the Netherlands. Uh, and I, I had the honor to meet him uh, a few years ago and a few times after that. And uh, he reminded me of his time in the Netherlands. And it was a uh, yeah, really special, special man, special connection. And above all, a great coach. Emily, Emily, uh, it's been notable the number of athletes already posting that they're logging out of social media. Um, can you give us an insight into what advice you would or have passed on to the other swimming athletes and also just about your mindset heading into this games? I think um, for social media, it's something that you have to decide personally. It's something that someone can tell you, oh, you should do that, because preferentially they might want to do that, they might like that, they might like the distraction. For me personally, it doesn't work, I know that. Um, and the same approach I took into Kazan is the same approach I'm taking here. Um, I basically haven't really posted anything as of late. Um, I don't plan to, um, and I think as soon as I finish, my swims, um, definitely on the finals. I might like to do a post, I might not. Um, and then I'll just take it how it goes from there. I mean, I'm not reading into it and I'm not making it a big thing like it should, shouldn't be. It's just something that you personally might want to do, might not want to do. Uh, when your sister did this world record, I mean, that must have caused some mixed feelings, of course. I mean, on one way, proud maybe but also thinking of the 100, you want to win the gold medal as well. So tell me about those emotions. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that mixed. I was mainly just proud and a little bit astounded because it wasn't expected. It was something that we didn't think was going to happen. Um, I certainly didn't expect it. I coached it and Kank did it. And I couldn't believe that it had happened. I wasn't, I wasn't even at the pool when it happened. So I got a phone call about it. And I thought, I thought my dad was joking. I didn't think he was, he was telling the truth. Um, but yeah, it, obviously, we were all there to compete, we are all there to win, and, and breaking, breaking a world record doesn't change that for me. Um, it's all about what happens at the final and who can be the fastest on the night. Um, I knew Kate was swimming well. I see, I see her training every day. I, I know what she's capable of. Um, breaking a world record is, is an amazing thing, and I'm really proud of her for doing it, but it doesn't, it doesn't really change anything for me. Question for... Mitch and Cam, um, you guys were the, um, the kids on the team four years ago. Um, you're both in very different positions now. How different does it feel? Um, and sort of, and sort of, what do you sort of, what approach are you taking into this Olympics compared with four years ago? Um, and an additional question for Cam about what science project you're working on while you're here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think. Um, looking back four years, it's pretty amazing to think that was four years ago. Um, you know, it's gone so quickly, but um, the feel within the team is certainly different for me personally. Um, in London, it was just about experience, um, getting to know what a Games is like, um, you know, trying to take in so many sights, all the distractions, and then this time around, I think the whole team, we, we knew what we were expecting when we were coming here, and, um, you know, for me, I, it, it's a sense of um, being here before. Um, and so for me personally, the team's changed so much. We've grown up, we've, um, the team now uh, gets along, we've all grown up together swimming, and, and um, there's a really different sense of pride and, and trust, and um, you know, there's a lot of respect within the team. You know, whether you swim the sprint event or you know, the long distance open water, there's a great deal of respect, and we all know how hard we've all worked to be here, so um, you know, we can trust each other and, and really look forward to you know, swimming our own events and celebrating within um, one another. Uh, Jaco, um, hi, Jaco. I knew that. My, my, my microphone's working now. 
Um, I can't really add too much to what Mitch said because he pretty much hit the nail on the head, but uh, just looking at the, the athletes here now, um, Em and Kate, when they were really young, they made the Australian swim teams and, and, and have been on these swim teams for, for a very long time. So um, for myself growing up, uh, I didn't see too much of them around the pool deck in terms of their, um, apart from the, the National Age Championships and stuff, because I was very much on the lower end of the, of the totem pole. But uh, myself, Mitch, and Bronte, uh, very similar ages, uh, we've been we've been racing racing each other or racing at the same competitions uh, with each other since we were seven, eight, nine, ten years old uh, at, on the Gold Coast in Brisbane and, and at Queensland States, and I'm sure uh, that the same applies to Kate uh, and M and a lot of other people on the swim team right now. So we're we're a team who we've basically grown up together with the sport. We've seen each other uh, compete well, compete not quite so well and, and just move through the sport from, from the, the young age groups to where we are now. So that's something that is hard to, to replicate or, or, or to, to simulate um, in, in any other instance. So I think it's a really rare and, and, and huge uh, part of our team that I think is, is something that's so important and, and so hard to replicate and it's something special about our team. Oh yeah. Um, so um, I'm not currently enrolled in the, the semester coming up, but I, I've been doing research with a professor uh, at my university, at Griffith University, um, since the, the start of summer last year. Um, so I'll just be carrying on with that stuff. That's in biophysics with the, the dipole moments of biomolecules. Chaco. Yeah, long time. Long time, Nancy. Um, sports Illustrator, what have you made of Sports Illustrator uh, predicting 11 gold in the pool by Australia? That sort of thing. I know you don't like making predictions, but I mean, how confident are you of uh, making up for that disappointment in, uh, in, in London? Um, I don't think we're here to make up for any disappointment. Uh, we're here to do our very best, uh, and uh, everybody prepared well to do that. And I think that is the main thing. Uh, nobody is busy with what happened or what might happen. Uh, everybody is well and truly in the moment. So uh, that is the approach we're taking. Um, the Americans arrived last night, just like you guys in chartered planes, so they travelled nicely. This is the biggest press conference there's probably been since the games began in the last few days. Um, you're a headline act, they're a headline act. Have you seen each other in the... Uh, I might ask you, have you seen, bumped into any of your competitors there? Is there a bit of trash talking with the, with the Yanks? Uh, I briefly saw them this morning. Um, they were warming up as I was swimming, and then by the time I was hopping out, they were hopping in. So I didn't really catch anyone, um, but I'm sure I'll see them at the pool. I mean, we got to train at the same time, so I'll see them at some point. Oh, is that sorry? you think so, but actually, a lot of us are really, really good friends with the Americans, so it's almost like it was excitement to see them coming, because then it's like uh, there's some familiar faces in the village, and because there's so many of them, it's more, uh, there's more probability that you're going to run into them in the village. Um, but they are a powerhouse team, and you can definitely feel their, their presence in the pool, and I think that was, that was pretty exciting this morning to see them come in. spoke this morning about Forbes and it adding inspiration and motivation for the swim team, given his contribution. Just wanted to know, if, firstly, if you guys had spoken about that amongst yourselves at all. And also, um, just on yourself and the 100, Missy Franklin not being there, um, is it going to be a strange feeling for you that, she, I know she'll be there in 200, but that she won't be defending? Um. As for Forbes, we, actually, we haven't spoken as of yet, um, but he did make a massive improvement on swimming in Australia and it, it's sad to hear the terrible news, but you know we've got to continue on with our job here. I don't think it's to dwell on, on what's happened, um, but we can sure you know get together and talk about it and 
you know, he, he made a massive difference in swimming and, you know, it's just sad that unfortunately he won't be around to see this one. Um, as for the 100, I tend not to really worry about who's in the marshalling room. I, I can't control what they're going to do, I can only control what I can do and I've got to focus on what's in my lane and that's just myself, so. Um, but I'm excited to see Missy, um, I've missed her to be honest. <laughs> Jaco, you've got quite a few Olympic rookies on this team. How have they handled the nerves of coming into the village, settling into camp? And then what do you say to them about preparing for their first Olympic Games? Because a few of them are in quite good medal contention if you look at their times. Yeah, what we're, what we're definitely doing in this team is sharing a lot of information, sharing a lot of experience and knowledge. So rookie coaches are talking to more experienced coaches. Uh, rookie staff members are doing the same with staff and rookie athletes are talking to the more experienced uh, uh, athletes that are that are sitting here so that's mainly the approach um, uh, the problem with experience is uh, uh, most of the time you have to go through it to actually get the experience and be allowed to make mistakes but of course we're avoiding that to happen as much as possible so I think from my point we couldn't have given them more information uh, than we did up until now and uh, the, uh, the sharing of information is really an ongoing thing. Just two more questions. Jarko, I'm going to just get your thoughts on the, the situation with the Russians. Um, it just seems there's been a bit of mark passing uh, between FINA and the IOC in terms of their eligibility. Is it overshadowing the build-up? No, not for us. Uh, it is, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced everybody uh, has his or her opinion about this. But in this phase, uh, whatever we might say or think or express wouldn't make a difference anyway. And it is, as you're saying, it's something between FINA, IOC, WADA right now. We don't have any control over it, so we, uh, we'll see what, whatever happens and we're prepared to race. Last question, thank you. Emily, Cam, Kate, if you could just talk about, we enjoy this wonderful rivalry, the U.S. and Australia, and I know you know it's a very wonderful rivalry. Sometimes you're happier with it, sometimes you're not as happy with it. But can you talk about what it's like to go up against the Americans? Every four years we focus on it, Australia, U.S., and what your thoughts are. Um, to be honest, I think it's just about that always pretty much the best and we want to beat the best so we've got to you know race hard against them so I think that's probably where the rivalry really comes from um, I mean otherwise we're, we're pretty good mates like we all get on really well and and it's always a bit of fun in the marshalling room I know it is with the girls I mean we're all laughing and giggling and talking about you know whatever like nails and hair and typical typical girl stuff so I mean for us it's just kind of normal Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, sorry, this can. Oh, everybody. Yeah, it's it's always special to to stand up against the Americans, and uh, one of my favourite races I've ever swum uh, was made. One of uh, one of my favourites of it. One, one of my favourite races I've ever swum was made to be one of my favourite favourites because the partly because of the Americans in that race, and that was the Pan Pax in 2014 in the 100 free. Um, before I even did that, that final, I was, I was wrapped with it. I was like, no matter what happens, I'm, I'm happy just to do it, because uh, in my lane, when I looked to my left, I had not only James Magnuson next to me, but then I had Nathan Adrian and Michael Phelps as well. And I think between those three, there were almost 30 Olympic medals between them, and being a, a semi-rookie at the time on the international stage, that was, that was something that I just could not wrap my head around. It was almost immortal and um, I think carrying on that, that respect and, and, and that, well, that mutual respect between the countries um, into the games and even into the, everything that happens in between the games, it, it's something that is exciting and, and it just it gets the, the adrenaline pumping because it, it brings a lot of uh, life into the sport. Uh, I think that over the years um, we've had a really healthy rivalry with the US. I know that we've pushed them and, and they've pushed us. Um, 
it, I've always really enjoyed ra racing uh, everyone from America and after staging in America and Auburn, it's been great to, to see how, how they operate and the great facilities that, that they have over there uh, at the Auburn University facilities were incredible. I couldn't wrap my head around it. I think that all the swimmers were very stoked to have their own locker. Um, and all the Americans were like, but we always have one. Um, so I think that uh, it's, 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 it's just a natural friendship that, that has grown over the years of, of racing each other and pushing each other. I don't think that America would be where they are today without Australia. And I, I, I could say the same for Australia, that America has pushed us to be the great swimming nation we are as well. Thank you, everybody.